Tell me about your dad. Um, so he wasn't there a lot, so there's not much that I can say. If you ask me what kind of events like he was there for, he wasn't, it'd be easier to throw a rock and tell you where he, when he was there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what was your relationship like with your dad? It was kind of hit or miss. It kind of depended on like where he was at in his life, whether he wanted to be there or not. Um, it's always been rough. Like ever since I kind of started to see his flaws for myself, then because my mom, she never said anything bad about him to me. She let me see it on my own. Got it. What do you want to say to him? I just want him to hear me out and understand like why I'm upset and stop trying to come up with excuses for it. Mm -hmm. And why are you upset? <laughs> because he thinks he has like this right to be in my life when he wasn't there to begin with. There yeah. you go, love. And you have a brother that you've never met. Yes. Tell me about that. Um, so when my dad was 14, he had a child with this woman in New York. Um, and then when he was 15, his mom took him all the way to the other side of the U.S. to Washington. My dad's entire family tried to convince him that m my brother was not his because he's, he's too white. But, like, you look at me, I'm very white as well. Yeah. So he wasn't there all through my brother's childhood as far as I know because he was uncertain if he was the father. Got it. Why has it been five years that, since you've seen your daughter? So don't let it all fall on my shoulders, dear daughter of mine. You decided that I was not such a good person at a young age. And then when I did try to come, I did try to be there. I did go to your house. I did these things, but there was no TJ. Where'd she go? What happened? Well, you do understand why. She just said, I, yeah, oh, you oh, said I, I you were gonna do stuff, you promised, and then I you didn't show up. I absolutely understand that. But I love my daughter with everything. Tal AJ, I will die for you at any given moment. But you decided that I wasn't I good enough. That... You decided that I was a bad person, and you rode that, and you're riding that, and you're riding it, and you're riding it. <laughs> You know, and, I gave you ample and, opportunities to okay. make up for all that. All, right. all you ever did my whole life was tell me, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to get you this. I didn't, and okay. 22 years later, okay. 22, 22 years, 22. I have nothing from you. You don't have nothing? No. How about that coat that I bought you and you had, I have a picture of it. A coat. With you. Wow. A coat, not just one coat. A coat and all those okay. shoes when I and was two. And all the That's shoes. That's so great. And Try to play it off like I didn't give you and it's buy you. I have done it. I have things. She's I have telling you friends. that it's not about the material things. She's telling I you didn't what she felt. See, there you go. I didn't say that I don't accept it. So please don't put words in my mouth. I do accept my responsibility that I did this You're and I it's did my that. Fault. It's not no, my fault. I didn't say yes, that it you was did. your you fault. You straight up said it's my fault. When I you, decided. when you limit me from being, how is it my fault? It's your when fault you because you didn't me? have anything stable for me to rely on. All you had to do was make a call. Dad, I want you to come spend some time with and me. And then what, what's Boom. that gonna do there. for me? I couldn't even go see you if I wanted to because you didn't have nowhere to go or you were at so-and-so's house or who, wherever you were at doing whatever you wanted to do. For my whole childhood, you don't get to make excuses saying that okay. I decided that. I was right. eight years old and I seen it for All myself. Right. All right. I want to bring your son into this as well. Let's bring Daryl out. Back up, back up. All right? You'll have your moment, OK? I'm sorry. No, you don't have nothing to apologize for. I know you're hurting. Thank I you. see it. How you doing? Good to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, Colonel. Yes, thank you for coming on the show. Take a seat. I just heard you say to your sister, I know what you're going through. I feel you. How is it that you know what you're going through and y'all have never met? The thing is, is that I didn't meet my dad in person until a little bit before she was born. I didn't know about her until way later, until Same. I was in, like, high school. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very interesting that you do understand what she's going through because I remember you telling my producers that you only saw your father for the first time like three years ago. That was you saw when him things once? started to when he was become more of a, a, a thing. So uh, three came, years ago, he, he started to come, to become consistent. And 
started coming to my mom's house and stuff. And the thing was, he was spending more time with my mom and my other siblings that are my mom's kids than with me because I'm an adult and going and doing my thing. I'm not. I'm not I'm, here to blame I'm, you for. Okay. It. I'm I just, have to I just work. I have to. to. I have. I got you. Things that I'm working on. Do you respect your father? And do you respect your father? I just don't see what I should be respecting. Got it. I, I can understand okay. that. Do you respect your father? It. It depends on what you mean by respect. I respect him as a human being, but I don't feel like he's an authority figure to tell me anything in my life. Got it. So the thing is here, you, you're hearing your children say that they both feel like there's boundaries issues. They're feeling your children say that they both are accepting you back in their life, but they're also saying to you right now that they feel like you have a temper and you right. can't hear them. Right, I, I, I absolutely... actually, I don't know my dad well enough to know that he had a temper. Like, I honestly... If you're not including months when I was a baby, collectively, I've probably spent two, three months with this man. Yeah, yeah. There's something very special about you two meeting right now because you finally have somebody who understands what you're feeling. And I want you two to cultivate this relationship and bond and be stronger because in that is going to be healing for you both. But I will tell you, Donnell, I understand that you did some things in your past that you're acknowledging. But what your children are saying to you right now is that they need to set new boundaries and they need to set new things so that they can even have a relationship with you. The thing of the matter is that your children don't respect you right now and that respect has to start to be earned. And the thing is, is that every time you talk about, well, what I did and I tried to do this, it's unfortunately falling on deaf ears because they're hurt. Your children are hurt and as parents, it's our job to not say, well, I did do this, I did do that. It's to just acknowledge and say, I hurt you. What can I do to build the bond? And it might take That's 10 years, it might take 20, but you can't rush their healing. I appreciate that. Because you I want it to be on your that. time. I appreciate that. What? You feel that? I, I said I apologize and want to build. Oh, yeah. But like she you're said, still an apology come means... Up with excuses. There's no excuse. And, and the There's thing, no excuse. The thing I that I wanted to say reasons. is, like Tale said earlier, an apology means nothing without changed action. Okay, so I'm going to change right here on the stage. That's no, no, no. So what I said... That's what so I'm what talking about. That's it's what I'm talking about. It's about this. Let's, let's get, about let's about get this. to the start line before well, we the look at the finish. The start line for you right now is your children are telling you that they need time and they need new boundaries set. I'm, I'm the one that called the show, so how am I not understanding that there has to be some sort of... I, I'm not uh, calling... Of, see, this, uh, he, your son said it, and I see it. I don't think you're a bad guy. I think you're a defensive guy. I think you're constantly being defensive because you don't want to acknowledge the hurt that your kids feel. No, your kids I, have both absolutely. said that they felt hurt, they felt abandonment, they felt these things. So, and I know you say it, but they're both telling you that they right. need more action. I'm down to do whatever so, so that we, we can build I believe that. You. I, I, and, I heard and, that as well. And, but what they're telling you I, is I, that they I'm, need more time. Well, right. until they get that time. So this is where I have to go. You two have to support each other. You two be there for each other and start to talk about the things you need, the boundaries you need, and work that out. And for you, Donnell, I believe your children do want you in their lives. You just got to respect their time and their boundaries, and you'll get there. Listen, everyone, I want to thank Donnell, Daryl, and Tale for being with us. We just realized all of this today. When it comes to respect and families, it can be a tricky thing to navigate. So I encourage you to learn from my guests today, that if you're feeling disrespected, remember to communicate clearly by recognizing if actions or emotions are at play. And I promise you, if you do that, you will be taking the first steps in hearing each other and helping heal the relationship. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. Hold on, where are you going? I'll tell you where you're going, right here to subscribe and right here to watch more, period.